we have uh, other critical set of ratios. Uh, we call it as working capital turnover ratios. Very critical from, say, professional examination point of view, as well as uh, people who are working in an organization or people uh, who are uh, having continuous relationship with uh, bankers. Okay. Now, how to understand working capital ratios? In working capital ratios, our focus is we are going to compare sales or purchases with working capital. And we are going to infer various kind of uh, uh, or we are going to carry out various kind of analysis. Okay, So our focus is this. We are going to talk about inventory turnover ratio. We'll be talking about data turnover ratio and credit turnover ratio. Now, how to appreciate this? In inventory turnover ratio, what we would do is we would be comparing the cost of sales with average inventory. And why we should do this? Uh, just imagine a company which is having a huge inventory and their sales is only uh, two times or three times of their inventory. Okay, Let's say a company is having an inventory. Let me give some numbers here. Yeah. Let's say a company or a business model is having an inventory of uh, 100 lakhs and their cost of goods sold per annum is only 200 lakhs. Okay, let's say figures are in lakhs. It means they are, I mean, their goods are still simply stagnated. It is not getting rotated. There is no movement, right? Because their average inventory, AI, average inventory is 100, and for one full year, their total cost of goods sold is only 200. So if I create a relationship between these two, that is 200 by 100 their inventories have rotated only two times in a year okay but uh, let me give another company where they give keep average inventory of 100 and their annual cost of goods sold is something like say 1200 and if i calculate their inventory turnover ratio it gives me 12 times so it's a clear indication that their inventories are getting rotated as many times it has, it has got rotated 12 times that's how or that's why they were able to achieve cost of goods sold of 1200 it means this ratio, that is your inventory turnover ratio, would basically measure whether your goods are getting rotated or not. Why your goods should get rotated? Because only when your goods get rotated, it means the brisk sales activity is happening in your business. Okay, here this 100, my annual cost of goods sold is only 200. It means rotation is only two times, whereas here the rotation is 12 times. Obviously, if you measure the profit, here it will be very low, and here it will be very high, okay, because of uh, aggressive activities that are taking place. So, your inventory turnover ratio is nothing but this cost of goods sold, annual cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. That's the formula. So if the ratio is very high, it indicates that there is a good turnover of inventories. It means the activities are very good. And if the ratio is something like this too, and which indicates that uh, turnover level is very low, this company will have many other impact. The profit will be very low, number one, and they are keeping a lot of inventory, right? And this inventory will have a lot of carrying cost Okay, and that is going to impact the profit. That's the one reason the profit is low. And they are locking their money in inventory when compared with their annual level. It means they have to borrow some other alternative money and there they have to pay the financial cost. Again, that is going to hit the profit. And there is a possibility that the goods are kept in the ground for a very longer period. So there can be damage, there can be a deterioration, or we may lose the quality. Okay, so all this can be understood by just by looking at the inventory turnover ratio. If the inventory turnover ratio is high, it means it's good for the organization. If it is low, it means goods are getting stagnated, it is not getting rotated, it's not happening, no movement is happening. Okay, so that's about inventory turnover ratio. I'm just giving this, I've shown in Excel. The next one, inventory holding level. This is something which you should understand very much because it has a direct linkage with your inventory, uh, say, a turnover ratio. Now, here I said my annual cost of goods sold is 1200, right? Let me just uh, make it a little clear. It is my annual cost of goods sold. COGS stands for cost of goods sold. If this is 1200, it is basically for 12 months, okay? This 1200 is basically for 12 months. So what is my 
monthly cost of goods sold. My monthly cost of goods sold is 100. And what is the inventory I'm maintaining? I'm maintaining an inventory of 100. It means I can very easily say I'm maintaining inventory of one month. And that is something fine, but uh, just look at this case. What is my annual cost of goods sold? It is 200. So what is going to be my monthly cost of goods sold? It is 200 divided by 12. It is 16.67. And what is the average inventory I'm maintaining? It is 100. So how many months of inventory I'm maintaining? It is 100 divided by 16.67. It means I'm maintaining six months of inventory. Just imagine for how long you are locking your money in the inventory. And obviously, you will have all this. Your carrying cost will be high. Your borrowing cost will be high. You will be suffering damages, deterioration. Fine. So bankers, when they want to fund the working capital, they would be very much particular about your inventory holding period. If your inventory holding period is something like this, one month, one and a half months, two months, they'll be happy. But if they look at inventory holding periods, something like this, six months, they would run away. Why? Because you are not competent enough to push your product in the market. You are keeping it stagnated with yourself. Then whatever the money you have invested is in the good down. And if the bank gives money, that will also go to the good down. So banks may not be interested in cases where the inventory holding period is very high. Okay, so how I have calculated this inventory holding period, it was simple. What I have taken is what is my monthly annual cost of goods sold? Okay, that I have divided from my average inventory. So average inventory divided by monthly cost of goods sold or daily cost of goods sold, that would give me what is my say inventory holding period. Okay. So let's see. The final formula should look like this. That is, your number of days of inventory is nothing but your average inventory divided by cost of goods sold per day. Or you can have it in per month so that you can express in number of months of inventory. Okay. Let's move on to the next one.